All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we've seen a few geospatial sessions today already. Uh, so I'm glad uh, we are all interested in geospatial data, and I think it's uh, there's probably more tomorrow with our HCR colleagues and. Uh, so, we're, our resident rep will be here in a minute, uh, but while we wait uh, for her to open the session. All right. Um, so, there's, I met a lot of our colleagues in the UN uh, in Valencia earlier this year that is working on UN maps, and there's a lot of work within the UN, and you saw also yesterday in the video uh, showing the work that the UN is do doing on geospatial data. And it's, uh, it's an important area because uh, there's a lot of information that we're not maximizing. Right? Um, and that's a big part of, of it for us in UNDP. And we'll talk uh, about some of the work that we're doing uh, on, in that area. And while we wait for that opening, uh, just uh, curious, uh, how many of us here are geospatial experts? Geospatial experts? One, two, yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, all right. Uh, how many of you have, uh, have used uh, ArcGIS, QGIS, and all of that? Yeah, not very few. Yeah, so it's, uh, there's a lot of other geospatial data, and we, for UNDP, for instance, we generate a lot of it. Uh, every time, and we get those layers sent, and we get a nice report. So I was just talking to our VHO colleagues earlier, and usually you get it, and you look at the report, and then you you put the the, uh, the layer somewhere. Right? So, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. So I'm glad uh, that our resident rep is here, um, and uh, she's going to do the opening for us. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Viate. Thank you, uh, uh, Baba Tunde, and good afternoon, uh, colleagues, uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very good uh, to be here and uh, extremely happy to see such a, a full room on day three uh, of the Data Forum. Uh, really good to see that the interest uh, remains uh, high and uh, uh, welcome to this uh, UNDP. Uh, event. My name is uh, Beate Trankman. I'm the uh, resident representative of uh, UNDP here in uh, China, operating out of uh, Beijing normally. And uh, uh, I had been asked by my headquarters uh, team to let, uh, lead the delegation. Uh, uh, so very happy to be part of uh, um, this event. Um, we've been talking, I, I think, a lot about the last uh, over the last three days how the multiple crises that the world is facing is really impeding uh, development, how much ground we have lost on the SDGs. We were behind uh, even before the pandemic, we're further behind now. We've also lost uh, uh, ground on human development, uh, which is what, as you know, UNDP uses to measure uh, development uh, progress. We've seen for the first time ever in the 32 years that UNDP has been generating this data on an annual basis. Uh, the Human Development Index, uh, the aggregate global uh, uh, index across the board, um, uh, uh, reducing for two years uh, in a row, regressing. Um, and so we need uh, air under our wings, and part of that air under our wings is uh, data. Um, so as UNDP, we've been looking now for a while, uh, and we've been investing into uh, data integration and uh, developing new tools that are evidence-driven uh, and future-oriented and that can help us to realize the uh, uh, promise of the 2030 uh, agenda and make up for uh, ground uh, lost. And one of these tools is our uh, data future platform, which we are showcasing uh, uh, here, here today. Um, it's a, actually a flagship uh, initiative by uh, UNDP that has been designed to empower uh, decision makers everywhere with relevant and cutting edge uh, data and in, uh, insights and it functions as a, 
as a gateway, not only across UNDP, but hopefully at some point also uh, across the UN uh, uh, system. And it, it was launched in 2020 initially uh, with support from uh, uh, partners uh, uh, across the UN system, including uh, UNICEF, UNEP, uh, FAO, and uh, UNFPA, but also uh, I, I, IBM as an important uh, uh, partner. And uh, I want to take the opportunity to thank uh, uh, our partners for that uh, uh, fruitful uh, collaboration that we've uh, had. Now, over time, I think the team uh, in uh, New York has uh, uh, aimed at uh, further refining uh, the tool and adding new features. And one such uh, tool, and Babatunda was, uh, my colleague, uh, was uh, alluding to it, is uh, the, what we call the GeoHub, which is a tool to capture um, geospatial data, or to use geospatial data, rather, uh, to capture uh, and understand the local uh, dynamics of, uh, on complex development uh, challenges on the ground and help uh, policymakers with limited resources to be make better sense of uh, what is going on. So today the purpose is really to showcase, I think, uh, the GeoHub uh, to you. Uh, uh, Baba Tunde will run us uh, through that and uh, to show you how it's connecting and visualizing uh, various SDG um, indicators. Um, as I said, with only seven years to go uh, to the uh, uh, SDGs, we need all the um, thinking caps on, all the innovation that we can uh, get, and we hope as UNDP that we can uh, make a small contribution uh, to that uh, uh, challenge that confronts us. So with that, uh, uh, thank you again for being with us, and over to you, uh, Baba Tonda, uh, to run us through. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. All right, so um, we're going to walk through the uh, data features platform, Geospatial, the GeoHub. Uh, before we go through that, uh, you can go to the next slide. Um, so there are three things that we're trying to do with this, right? And I'll try and tell a story around the work that we do and you know, why this is very important for, to us, right? Uh, first is that in UNDP, as I was saying earlier, you know, we have many projects, we have many work that we do in the country office level. Um, you know, we have a big portfolio on, w, uh, on health, we have a big portfolio on climate, uh, we have a big portfolio on so many different work that we do. And uh, when we generate those layers, the layers you know, comes in, the project manager gets it, and it's somehow it gets lost, right? Um, so part of it for us is to be able to have a place within the organization where all those data can sit, right? Um, so it sits on our server in UNDP, it, you know, we can start to be able to use it so that when I go into a country, I can say, okay, there's layers that are generated when we're doing, working with the Ministry of Health, layers generated when we're working with the Ministry of Environment, and all of that, right? So that's very important uh, for, for this, and part of the thinking, uh, uh, with this. Uh, we know that there's a lot of geospatial tools out there, right? And we're not saying that we sh people shouldn't use it. You can use those tools. Uh, but when those tools are, you generate those layers, we want to be able to house it uh, within the organization. Uh, the second is the multiple use of the data, right? So now when we have the data, right? Um, so uh, Beate talked earlier about multidimensional integration um, and the uh, poly crisis that we're in. So you, it's not just health, and I'll show examples of how we've applied some of this in the work that we're doing. Right? It's a health problem, but there's a climate dimension to it, there's a governance dimension, and we need to be able to start to integrate that data and use it effectively. Uh, so that's very important. The third is, the, the earlier I was asking everyone, uh, how many of us know how to use QGIS and ArcGIS and the rest? Uh, it's, I, learned, I, had to le I had to learn some of that when I was in grad school when I was doing some work on climate change uh, impact as an economist. Uh, but it's not everybody that knows how to do it. Right? Um, so for many of us in UNDP, where we're uh, development practitioners, policymakers, 
uh, we want easy use of these tools, right? I want to be able to click um, and combine stuff and uh, be able to use it. So that's also part of the thinking behind it. Um, so uh, we want to be able to integrate all of this, and uh, which is part of what we're going to uh, walk you through today. Uh, next slide. So here is, I'm giving an example of an application uh, during COVID, right? Um, so in terms of the integration of different data. Um, so in 2021, uh, when vaccination started and uh, there were different issues around you know, vaccines and countries were not getting enough vaccines and there were this, you know, how do you prioritize and how do you start to use different information to be able to understand micro planning and the rest. Right? Um, so then we worked with WHO and, and partners uh, with Frame uh, to start to say, okay, let's start to build different information together. Right? Uh, so here you see uh, an example of uh, you know, we first we map priority groups. Right? You, know, you try to understand it within a country where people are the other population. Uh, then you overlay that with uh, the vulnerability score in terms of uh, different vulnerability to COVID then. Right? Um, and then with that gives you a model of vaccine allocation. Uh, and we worked with then with uh, different country offices uh, to be able to help uh, support macro planning uh, with that. So this is one example of combining different information, which is part of what we're uh, trying to do uh, with all this data that we put in behind it. Uh, next slide. And here, uh, so this is you know, the last COP. There was a lot of uh, conversations. And a big part of that outcome of the COP was the loss and damage, right? And this loss and damage, there's, you know, it's a big announcement in terms of loss and damages, but there's still a lot that needs to be put in place for us here to get to the place where that fund can actually be, uh, be implemented, right? And here you see an example of different area of information that is required to be able to do a loss and damage estimates. Right? Uh, you need information on drought, you need information on climate, you need all of this. Right? Uh, that's where, you know, and uh, for economists, uh, uh, there's uh, economic data that you need. I need to be able to map out uh, assets in different ways and infrastructure. I need to be able to map out vulnerable households. And this, all this requires integration of data. Right? Um, and the more information that we can use, uh, the better. Uh, tomorrow we'll see from our HDRO colleagues uh, uh, climate uh, data that you can start to see at the upper local level also that forecasts uh, climate data. And we need to bring, start to bring all of that uh, to be able to tell the story. Uh, and that's where the infrastructure that we're building uh, hopefully helps with that. Uh, next slide. All right, so here I'm going to do a little bit of a little bit of deep dive into one uh, moonshot in UNDP, right? And that's uh, to be able to provide access to 500 million people, energy access 500 million people by 2025. Right? It's an ambitious uh, moonshot, right? Um, and the UN uh, is committed to it, and uh, part of it for us in UNDP is to start to see what tools and thinking that we can put behind that to help, uh, help us be able to do that effectively. Right? And one of that is, uh, is the geospatial data, which I'll, it will be launched next week or so. But I'll give you a deep uh, shot of this. Uh, so to do that effectively, one, we need to, to identify those that were left behind. Right? Um, uh, we were having a conversation a year or so ago with the private sector colleagues and, and after the moonshot was announced and they were like, the issue is not the technology itself. If, you, if there's money today and there's willingness to pay, we're going to provide electricity to everybody, right? Uh, like, yeah, but there's the willingness to pay is not there, right? Anyway. So for us is to be able to identify those that will be left behind, who does not have reliable access, where are they? And with this, we worked with the uh, University of Michigan to generate uh, hyperlocal uh, data. We know there's uh, data at uh, the uh, national level that is more macro that uh, our colleagues at the World Bank generates. Uh, but we need some level of uh, 
granular data uh, to be able to also understand where people are. Um, and then we need to, to combine that with different information in terms of uh, willingness to pay and poverty and who <coughs> and the rest. Right? Um, and then after that, we need to be able to start to do some cost analysis and make a case for either public investment or private investment and uh, be able to make a case for private sectors that if you provide electricity access to this community, there, there's some willingness to pay there. And for this, we need to find other ways uh, to be able to finance that. Uh, next slide. So this uh, just an, is an example of what it looks like. Uh, and this is going to be on the Data Features platform. It's powered by the GeoHub, and we'll see the demo on the GeoHub soon. Uh, it's powered by the GeoHub, but here it, we're trying to make it a easier for colleagues and policy makers to be able to use it so that I can able to navigate to a country. I can start to you know, see uh, le different level of poverty. I can go into a district um, and, and be able to filter. Um, so that's one application of this. So it's combining you know, electricity layers with uh, poverty layers uh, so that you can start to uh, disaggregate by country. Um, and this is one example uh, application of this. Uh, next. Uh, this just provides a little bit of uh, focus and we'll share uh, a link to this in a week or two uh, so that everybody can be able to see and interact with it. It's currently password protected. Uh, next slide. All right, so this is the job and you know, I showed some applications of how you can use the GeoHub to just generate it. The GeoHub itself, it has different layers uh, of data. Um, Inya, Inya with my colleague, uh, we'll talk a little bit about it in a minute. Um, and it's uh, with, you know, you'll ask why do you need another geospatial platform? It's because the geospatial layers are heavy and bigger and not easy to be able to, um, it's not the same as just mapping GDP data, right? Um, it's, so that's part of why we wanted something stronger, something that people can be able to easily interact with and be able to, to drill a little bit further. So that's, uh, that's uh, the GeoHub, and uh, I think we'll play the video now. Yeah? And then and then Inya will do the walkthrough after. And uh, as we're... The GeoHub, hosted on the Data Futures platform, is UNDP's one-stop shop for just The GeoHub, hosted on the Data Futures platform, is UNDP's one-stop shop for... The GeoHub, hosted on the Data... It'll come. <laughs> The GeoHub, hosted on the Data Futures platform, is UNDP's one-stop shop for geospatial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fun part of technology. <laughs> uh, hosted on the Data Futures platform, is UNDP's one-stop shop for geospatial data and services, tailored specifically for development policymakers. Geospatial information is critical to countries' ability to explore, diagnose the distribution of needs, and to advance development planning and interventions. Currently, the GeoHub hosts over 500 data sets arranged in buckets according to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, with each bucket home to geospatial layers containing data on the enablers and the progress towards the SDGs. The GeoHub contains data at various levels of disaggregation, with some data sets presenting data on the national level, while others showcase more granular subnational data. In this example, we look at the subnational distribution of electricity access. Through the GeoHub's built in analysis features, users can intuitively create their own insights. For instance, changing the color scheme can help pinpoint the areas with higher levels of access from those where electricity remains largely unavailable. In addition, 
The GeoHub's integrated statistical features allow for ready-made analysis which will categorize the data based on its distribution. Here we have chosen an analysis that maximizes the separation between the classes. Zooming in on the Democratic Republic of the Congo, it allows us to distinctly see the relatively high levels of electricity access in urban centers like Kinshasa, Kizangani, and Lubumbashi. And using a click, we can query the data to find the value for each location. The GeoHub allows final refinements of the information visualized and bringing in large amounts of information for multidimensional analysis. In this example, we look data on the distribution of poverty in Zambia. Color coding the districts based on the number of people living in poverty can provide the first insights on where action is needed. We can add more detail by labeling the values for each district and narrow down the analysis by filtering the areas with a substantial poverty headcount. We can expand the analysis by bringing in additional indicators. In this example, we are adding hyperlocal data on Zambia's measles vaccination coverage. By combining the two layers, we can see the pockets of lower vaccination coverage in darker red, while the value labels show the poverty headcounts, allowing us to pinpoint some of the multidimensional challenges at the district level. Additional data across the SDGs can be included to provide the needed insights. Okay, so it's uh, geohub.data.unp.org. I know we didn't put it there. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I know it's 3.38, Inya will do a quick demo for us and then uh, we can take some questions. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Thanks guys. Sorry, my voice is not as sweet as that one, okay? <laughs> so just, uh, just manage. All right, so I mean the whole idea, the, the Joe Hub is a uh, a geospatial um, platform, a comprehensive geospatial platform that is designed around the SDG goals um, to be able to provide a seamless uh, access for the user, um, to be able to interact with the SDGs, the indicators, and the data associated with that. And it provides uh, support to the two main GIS data formats, rasters and vectors, and it gives the user um, full control over the data set. Um, the rasters are uh, stored as cloud-optimized geotiffs, and the vector tiles are stored as, uh, and the vectors are stored as vector tiles, and everything is on the Microsoft Azure infra infrastructure. And so one of the things you can see is that, uh, you know, this is a very, most web applications just allow you to be able to visualize, but this owner also allows you to be able to interact with the data. And, uh, and here we have, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's like more than 4,000 data sets there. And so to make it easy for, for the catalog to be searched, you're able to search using text at the top. Um, the text is searches it based on descriptions of file names. And then you can also use the, the, those uh, filters to be able to drill down to what you want, year, team, and admin level. It so allows you to be able to do raster, calc um, raster filtering, and you'll be able to pick, uh, uh, here we're looking at the 20, 2020 population density, and we want to see where we have population greater than 5,000. And so you can see the, the, you know, the, the core urban areas in the country of Zambia. We select, we're, picking up, we're picking up Zambia today. 
And you can do the same with uh, the vectors. Vector, you have to filter the vector based on all the, all the attributes in the vector file. So here we're looking at uh, poverty um, greater than. You have the option of, uh, so for those, for those GIS specialists, this is like your celebi attributes. And you can combine multiple conditions to drill down to, to, to what you are looking for. Understand trends, localize trends, and identify vulnerable populations. And so at the end of the day, after your analysis, you are able to save the map and share it with colleagues. Right now, it's only with, you, you need to have a UNDP account um, to be able to use it. But this allows collaboration. Um, it allows collaboration. exactly how you left it. So you can basically just save your work and come back and continue the next day or another time. And then the final thing that uh, we'll be highlighting on is, uh, I mean, I know it says uh, HDI. It's not that HDI. But this was just a way to show um, what functionalities or what the, we can be able to do simulation. Um, if we have the formula for whatever index that you are interested in, we are able to replicate that and provide a way for you to interact with the data beyond just, visualize, beyond just visualization, but being able to generate values on the fly. And so here we are trying to simulate what would happen if you were to increase life expectancy, expected year of education and uh, in mean education, and along with income increments, and you'll be able to see the, its impact on the HDI. Um, and so we go from an average of 0 0.4 to an average of 0 0.8. Um, and, uh, and so not just with HDI, but we know whatever other indicator that, you are in, that, you are, that the user is interested in. And uh, I put this slide uh, just because it reminded me of the, from the plenary session about what we need to get to where we need to go, innovation, and most importantly, partnership. Thank you. One minute, but uh, thanks. Uh, this, is, uh, this, this has been a lot of thinking and working with many of you uh, to make this happen. And I know for a lot of you and colleagues, we've been having conversations with UNFPA and UNICEF, and because it's, as you see earlier, there's, we are trying to do some of this, right? And we are, have in UNDP the mandate to integrate, the mandate to be able to bring all of this information together. and. Uh, based on that, we're, you know, it would be great to continue to see how we build further on this. But I'll ask uh, Ms. Biate if you can say a quick uh, wrap up and then we can ask. Oh, yes. Questions. Questions. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Nargis. I'm from Tajikistan, representing UN Resident Coordinator Office. Um, uh, I'm the data person, and every time when we uh, do ask for the data, uh, we do have some uh, difficulties uh, in finding the data available. My question is, uh, how you collect the data, how you get it validated, if it is just uh, the nationally verified data, and to what extent the local offices, the country offices, use the same platform during their reporting and planning? Thank you. Any other 
question for Don't ask the top question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, just a very quick one. Uh, uh, are the layers also available, what you present as web map services or some kind of standard OGC services, or is it just visualization, just to, to understand? Thank you. Uh, so to uh, last, I'll let Inya answer your question. Uh, so th that's a big part of, for you, thanks for that question. That's a big part of why we wanted to develop it, right? Um, to be able to start to bring all of that information together. Right? So our country office, even in the country office, usually, right? Um, there's sometimes like five different projects is collecting the same data at the same time, right? Uh, it's not that they're, it's not that they are wasteful, it's just that it, when everything is done in one place, then I think that I need health data, but then the consultant comes and collects health data, collects socioeconomic data, collects all of this, and you know, makes it available, right? Um, so that's part of why we're trying to have everything sit in one place uh, in the UNDP. Um, there's, for all our work, there's always quality control and quality assurance uh, because it's, it's like usually somebody that will be hired and be reviewed. So those layers that we get typically are good layers uh, at the end of the day. Uh, so that's a big part of it, to be able to have it in one place. And part of the functionality of this will be for you to be able to, as Inya was showing earlier, for you also to share that data. Uh, and all this code is open source for us uh, and we can make it available uh, through that part of our we're not keeping it. Yeah, do you want to quickly respond? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the part about being able to get access to the data, um, there is actually um, an, uh, an option to download the data. And also, we do have an API that gives you access to pretty much all the data that we have uh, in the database. Um, a quick question uh, for this uh, um, the, this API: Is that easy to update data because data is updating so quickly? Is that uh, the data source already linked to the original source, or uh, everything automatic, or you're working towards that? Uh, and so the second is: Does it have some analytical function, or mostly you collect data for visualization? So the the API it points to our own data sources. So whenever we updated download the library will also be updated. And so that will give you access to the data, not just for visualization, but along with the attributes as well. And uh, there was something I didn't mention, but we also have the GeoHub pointing to other data sources, like you could see the Microsoft Planetary Computer. So we have its, its stack collection. Um, but you know, you will, for you to get access, you also need its own API. So you have access to the data along with its attributes to be able to generate the analytics that you will need. Uh, do you have also the layer that can show where UNDP projects are implemented? Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's in the works. Um, that's in the works. Yes, but that's something that uh, um, we we have it, but not here. We have it on a different. We have it on a different. Yeah. Yeah. And the. Yes, we, we can. That is the plan, to be able to link it from uh, the PIMS that is in, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Baba Tunde, maybe this is a question for you. Uh, you have some hyperlocal data there, and if I'm a policymaker at local level, let's say, 
and I don't have the resources, sometimes not, don't have the capacity or knowledge to do it, and how can I engage with you? How can I get this? No, not just the data, because I don't have the, the capacity to, to analyze it. Yeah. So let's, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, Karen, for that. <laughs> uh, that's a big part of this for us, right? So it's, we're not, I mean, so we'll think through our data work in UNDP in, in like two or three layers, right? There's the layer of, you know, we have all this data here, we put an infrastructure there, people can interact with it and use it as it is, right? Uh, then the second is now, okay, there's, there's all this information here. There's still, you know, to do decision intelligence properly, right? There's additional work that I need to do. I need to do modeling, I need to combine more information. In some cases, there might be layers that we don't have that needs to be collected. Um, how do you do that effectively? And that's uh, why at UNDP, we have 170 countries where we are present uh, with our country offices, and uh, through that channel, uh, we're able to work with different governments. And um, it's, um, there's a lot at national level expertise on GIS, right? Um, so we're not replacing that. I think we'll continue to use local uh, capacity to generate those layers and do those combinations. But in some cases, uh, especially for advanced analytics, sometimes you need the computing power, you need uh, you know, a tool like this to, be able to help you combine it. And that's why UNDP is uh, trying to make this available so that yeah, I'll be able to support work at the national level. All right. I don't know if you are holding up. In case we're holding up another session, let me uh, quickly uh, close us uh, off and thank you so much, uh, Baba Tunde and Inya and uh, uh, Gayan and uh, the whole team for uh, introducing uh, this to us. I think you've got all got us on tenterhooks now, right? Because it's not as yet uh, fully available uh, to the public. So uh, do let let us make sure that uh, uh, you know we make that information available as, as soon. Okay, okay. But you were saying it's passport uh, protect. Ah, okay, clear. Anyway, I think it is a, it is a great example, you know, how to, the, how to harness the potential of, uh, uh, and the power of uh, data and innovation uh, to really uh, bring ab about transformative uh, uh, change and how we can leverage various uh, data sources, combining them for more granular analysis, which is oftentimes, I think, where we, we lack, right? We have a picture, but it's not sufficiently precise to develop pinpointed uh, answer, and I think answers, and I, I think that's exactly uh, the, the purpose of uh, uh, this. So we do hope that this will be a, a resource, a useful resource for uh, development planners, for policy makers, for uh, development uh, <coughs> practitioners in uh, uh, formulating uh, interventions that can be that can increase SDG uh, impact and, uh, as I said, make make up for the ground uh, uh, lost uh, on the 2030 uh, agenda. So uh, I would really encourage you, all of you, to uh, use it, to interact with it, to uh, tell us also what you're finding. Uh, you are the ones who will be practice testing this. So. We do want to hear from uh, you, uh, and as uh, uh, UNDP, I mean, I think we are we're certainly committed uh, uh, to continue working, as uh, Baba Tunde was also saying, with uh, our governments, with the national uh, statistic bureaus, uh, et cetera, to uh, leverage uh, geospatial data for SDG uh, progress and further refine these uh, type of tools. So this is a start of a conversation. Uh, congratulations to the team for getting us where, where we are. Much more work to do and uh, really look forward to uh, uh, continuing this conversation and to working with all of you. Thank you so much and wish you a good afternoon. <laughs>